Mr. Drake, you will please get dressed and come with us. Come back in the morning. You are under arrest. Then. Suppose you think this is funny. It is indeed. Two o'clock in the morning. But we policemen cannot work quite all out. I was asleep. What do you want? They told me you were in Delhi. I thought it'd be nice to see each other again. It's been a long time. So you dragged me out of bed at two o'clock in the morning for a social chat. Mm-hmm. Would you care to come to my office for a cup of tea? No, I wouldn't. Headquarters, then. I was quite offended you didn't look me up. I would have done. You've had plenty of time. You've been in Delhi three days. Are you on business? <laughs> the chief of police with his London training should know better than to ask me questions I can't answer. <laughs> of course. I shall relieve you of the embarrassment. Thank you. And tell you, you're looking for a certain gentleman in Delhi. An Indian national in his own country. However, I shall not press the point. Shall we leave the gentleman nameless? Please do. As a further proof of our old friendship, I should not even ask you what you want with oh, him. Come on, get on with it, Khan. You haven't been able to find him. Why didn't you come to me? I could have helped you. There are certain things that can't be made uh, official. It needn't be official. I have a large police force which can surely be used to help an old friend. It might help. Good. Then I shall do it. Much quicker and quieter than you could ever hope to be. That's very kind of you. Now, what are you after? You're becoming very cynical, John. But now that you've offered to help, there is something, uh, a very little thing that you could do for me. <laughs> so little that you've dragged me out of bed. It concerns an Englishman. Flotsam from the British Raj. Oh, you're not still chasing the poor old imperialists, are you? He used to be a colonel in the British Army. Blakely, he stayed out here. I'd just like you to talk to him. Some poor old devil living out here on his pension. He supplements it by selling butterflies. Butterflies. Sells them to collectors all over the world. Many people collect them. Butterflies. Colonel Blakely had an assistant, an Indian who's just been found dead in very strange circumstances. Cyanide poisoning. Butterfly collectors use cyanide in their killing bottles. Sen, order some tea for our guest. It seemed like an accident. Perhaps I'm being over suspicious. Anyway, I did some checking. Tea for Major Khan, please. Just before he died, the Indian seemed to have quite a lot of money. And so you made a discreet inquiry at the Colonel's bank and discovered a series of unexplained withdrawals. Just two, Mr. Drake, but for quite large sums. Could have been blackmail, but perhaps nothing so simple. He's in our security files. His loyalty was once suspected. Grumbling in the club, I suppose. Why me? Fellow white man and all that. But my time has been paid for by the British taxpayer. Meanwhile, I find your man. Each of us doing the other's job better than he can do it himself. Hmm? All right, Khan, you're on. Where do I find it? He lives off in the jungle with an unmarried daughter and a servant. Well, there is a club he uses sometimes, but he's a bit of a solitary. You better start learning about butterflies. Well, not on your life. I suspect that the daughter is a better proposition. How old is she? Oh, not old, I don't know. Pretty? Who knows what you Europeans like? I've heard her described as something special. In that case, it's the daughter.
does out here? Oh, I'm not married. Oh. Then um, what do you do, Miss... Uh... My name's Joanna Blakely. I've been here all my life. Ah. Uh -huh. Then you work for the government? No. Um, then you're a nurse? No. I've got a house to look after. That accounts for your independence. Do you find it lonely out here? Hardly ever think about it. I kept pretty busy, you know. A house full of people, eh? No, just the two of us. Oh, I see. My father. You know, I'll bet that he's one of those determined characters who stayed behind when the British left. I'm all for them. Are you? How well do you know India? I see a good deal of it. I've got to. It's part of my job. Then you live here? For the time being. I'm um, in the travel business. Oh. You're responsible for all those dreadful tourists. Well, they don't get out as far as here, surely. Goodness, no. My father go mad. You make him sound uh, rather frightening. He's not really. He just doesn't get on very well with people. I hope he won't be angry because I drove you home. Normally he'd welcome you. He's just not himself at the moment. Nothing serious, I hope? A friend of his had an unfortunate accident. He was killed. I'm sorry. Well, thank you very much. It was very kind of oh, you. Let me give you a hand with that. Uh, wh where do you want these? Oh, put them anywhere. Uh, there will do. Um, can I get you a drink? Well, thanks very much. Joanna, someone's been through that fence again. It's the monkey's father, I told you. Oh, rubbish. Gin? Uh, thank you. Um, Daddy. This is Mr. Drake, my father, Colonel Blakely. How do you do? How do you do, sir? Oh, the car broke down and Mr. Drake was kind enough to give me a lift home. Well, uh, hadn't you better offer him a drink then? Yes, yes. I am. Uh, any success today, sir? Oh, well, never do. It's a habit. You're uh, new around here, what? Uh, yes, uh, as long as you... Thanks very much. As long as you don't ask me what I do. What do you do? Well, I was telling Mr. Drake how... You feel about tourists? Oh, not the travel business, huh? No, they won't be bothering you, sir. They're more interested in the uh, Taj Mahal and the Jama Mosque. Well, see that you keep them there. Joanna, get all this business out of here. Where would you like it, Oh, no, please. I, uh, I in the know. kitchen. Huh? Right. Yeah. Nice young fellow. How did you meet him? Well, the car wouldn't start, so he. <laughs> <laughs> Bit you up, eh, what? How's your um, glass? Oh, it's fine, thank you, sir. Must be getting away anyway. Cheers. Yeah. Good news. Thank you. Well, we, uh, we must meet again sometime in, in Delhi. How about tonight? Are you uh, free, Drake? Uh, unfortunately, I have a... Well, uh, have dinner with us at the club. What? Uh, that'd be very nice. <laughs> it's only a travel agent anyway. Splendid. Eight o'clock, then. If it's business, Mr. Drake, perhaps... Yeah, I, I could do with a night out. Right, eight eight o'clock then. Goodbye, sir. Bye. Bye. Good evening, 
sir. Good evening. I'm meeting a Colonel Blakely here. I'm a little early. Blakely? Hasn't been here for months. Oh, I, I hope he's coming this evening. He's invited me to dinner. Well, my name's Picton Jones. Let me get you a drink. Oh, that's very nice. Oh, thank you, Scott. I'm John Drake. Name well, old, uh, old Blakely? I only met him today. You're not bringing his daughter? Yes. I'd watch that. Thank you. Cheers. Hey, cheers. Married? Me? No, no. No, thought not. Oh, I suppose you're old enough to know what you're doing. Yeah. Where's Mrs. Blakely? One of those things we don't talk about much. Oh, so sorry. Matter of fact, she ran off with another fella. Went back to England. And Blakely felt badly because this chap was one of those scoundrels that gave India to the natives. Yeah. He insisted on custody of the daughter. Pity, really. Vindictive, of course. Yeah. She seems very fond of her father, though. Yes, but who is they here for? You know, sometimes I think Blakely's got a conscience about it. He knows he's ruined her chances. Mm. Ah, evening, Blakely. Evening. Uh, uh, come along, Drake. We'll order our drinks at the table. Yes. Uh, uh, thanks very much. Would you like a brandy, Drake? Um, no, thank you. Oh, come now. We have a very splendid brandy here. Oh, two. Uh, a chap at the bar was telling me that you're something of a butterfly expert. Picton Jones. He did, did he? <laughs> That's the sort of thing that I could be interested in. A fascinating hobby. Oh, it's not a hobby. It's his business. You sell them? It supplements the slender pension. A oh, very pleasant way of earning some money. They're beautiful things. You should hear Daddy on the subject. They're dirty things. You think of them as feeding on nectar. Actually, they'll settle on any bit of filth or carrion. Yeah. Is there a big market for them? All over the world. You're going to be out here for long, Drake? Oh, I hope they don't pull me back too soon. I'm just beginning to enjoy myself. But what sort of people buy butterflies? Oh, all sorts. We sell to dealers, mostly. For our best markets in Hong Kong. Really? Must we talk about butterflies? Uh, no, not with this excellent brandy. <laughs> Things went well, didn't they? He's nice, that young man of yours. Oh, for heaven's sake, Father. He did put someone off to come, and I don't mind betting it was not for the sake of my blue eyes. Please, don't let's go through all that again.
afternoon. I'm expected. I'm sorry, the Colonel's out. I must be early, then. Is Miss Blake at home? No, she's in town having her hair done. Uh, would you mind if I come in? It's rather hot out there. Can I get you some tea? Thank you. I expect you're still trying to get over this dreadful affair. Poor Supra. Uh, had your family? Oh, yes. He had four children. Well, I hope they're provided for. They say he was well off. I expect the Colonel paid him well. I did. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, she was just telling me about this dreadful business. That's a private matter. I'm so sorry. I it again. I, thank you. I, I do hope you don't think I'm prying or anything of that sort. Did you find anything out there? No, nothing much. Will Joanna be long? Any moment now. By the way, Drake, what is your job exactly? Well, I work for a, a large travel agency, and my job is to travel around the world and find tourist areas for development. Hmm. India's a bit far afield for you, isn't it? Long way to come for a fortnight's summer holiday. But the big jets make all the difference. People have the money nowadays. Some of which rubs off onto you. No, I don't do too badly. Oh, I... Sorry I'm late. Uh, it was worth it. Thank you. Well, if you'll forgive me, you too. I've got a lot of work to do. Shall I ask Margaret to bring you some tea? No, thanks. I'll have some later. Well, if you'll excuse me for a moment. Well. Trace him. What did you put in that tree? These, I left the originals where they were, from your defense ministry. Perhaps that's where we'll find him. That's right. Now, what about your side of the bargain? Ah, indeed, yes. Well, we are doing all we can. We expect news soon, don't we, Sen? At any time, sir. You know, it strikes me that this arrangement is rather one-sided. Uh, this man of yours is very elusive. Put more men on the job. Well, we shall be needing them, won't we, Sam? We will indeed, sir. I think there are many traitors involved. I shall get my net and... So I'm on my own again. Not at all. I asked just one more thing. No, no, none of this has got anything to do with me. 
You've looked at these? Yes, yes, they're arms specifications. Yes, of new British weapons. I know. Then it's just as much your business as it's mine. Look, Khan, you can handle this, can't you? But you know the Colonel. Now, this chain has two ends. We'll find out where it comes from. You find where it leads. Uh, sir, trouble. I had to come out of this direction anyway. Well, if you're sure, it would be nice to be driven in for once. Uh, shall I put that in the back for you? No, it's very fragile. I'd better look after it. Uh, you can go in now. Don't keep him long. He's seeing the minister in a few minutes. must be very important, Han, that you've come to me. It is very important, sir. Very well. We have proof that military information is being stolen from your ministry, sir. Go on. One of your staff is photocopying classified documents and passing them on to a British colonel. British colonel? His name is Blakely. How did you find this out? I've been using a British police officer whom I met when I trained in London. Are you sure that's all he is? Yes, sir. Good. Now then, who else knows about this? No one. I've just come straight to you. Very sensible. I will see that the minister hears about your discretion. What is the name of your British friend? John Drake, sir. You will tell him nothing of what I'm going to tell you now. You will tell no one. You will even forget about it yourself. This is a top security matter, Han. Sometimes we have to pass out information deliberately to confuse our enemies. We mix innocuous fact with fiction designed to give them false ideas. Are you quite clear about this? Yes, sir. Good. Then you will keep right out of it. Thank you, Major Hart. Got your man now, John. Fine. What about the parcel? You'll have to move if you want to catch it. Then fetch him up now. Uh, I'll see him privately. What about the parcel? You have to hurry if you're going to catch it. You leave that to us. Sen will find you a private room where you can interview your man. If you need any help, I've got two men who are good at that sort of thing. Uh, th that can wait. Don't you think we ought to get down to the post office and stop that leaving the country? Forget about that. I've got all I need on him now. I haven't. This is an Indian matter. You forget. They're British arms. I was not forgetting. We'll let the British have a full report later. So you know what Blakely's up to, do you? We know. And what he intends to do with the information? Isn't it time you got on with what you came to do? When you travel, your horizons broaden. You develop new interests. I'd hate to have you deported, John. Well, not just yet. I have to take Miss Blakely home first. I mean it, John. And I'd hate to interfere in the private business of another country, but if that's what you want, I'll collect the Colonel's daughter, take her home, and then return to pick up my man.
John, what's the matter? It's so and so jungle of yours. You know, I left the car, decided I'd walk over from the bridge, started off down the path, and in no time at all, that's completely lost. Well, <laughs> come in. It's a nice surprise, anyway. Oh, is your father in? No, he's gone into town. I'll get you a drink. I could certainly do with one. You know, one thing about that jungle, I can appreciate now why so many people buy your father's butterflies. I saw hundreds of them, beautiful things. Couldn't get anywhere near them, though. There's one in particular, uh, quite large, sort of a midnight blue colour. I know the one. It's very rare. You know, I'd, I'd rather like to see your father's collection. I, I don't think he'd like that very much, not while he's away. Really? Need he know? I suppose not. Not even a very big collection. Oh, really? I say. Do your father catch all these himself? Some. Sometimes he breeds them. Fascinating. I could watch them for hours. Now you're here, would you like to stay to dinner? Well, what a good idea. I, I missed lunch. I haven't eaten all day. Oh, you poor man. You must be starving. You come to, I'll get you a say, seat. that's absolutely beautiful, isn't it? I, I'm too long at the moment. It's got a fire. <laughs> What's happened? You look dreadful. Nothing, darling, nothing. I'm all right. Sit down. Look, Jan, I've been thinking about that travel agent fellow. Shh. I shouldn't build too much on anything. Daddy, he's here. What? Huh? He's... Hello, Colonel. Drake. What, what's the matter? Are you surprised to see me? You look as if you've seen a ghost. Well, didn't you see my car down by the bridge? Did you think I'd had an accident or something? Uh, no, they, they, they were saying down at the club that you'd gone back home. I wondered... Anyway, <laughs> I'm jolly glad to see you. Never did care much for these here today and gone tomorrow fellas. Huh? Daddy, John's staying to dinner. Whatever made you leave your car out there? Mad dogs and English when he went for a walk. Imagine. I should have known better, I suppose. I'm terribly tired, Jake. I don't want to see him inhospitable, but couldn't we possibly make it some other night? John's had hardly anything to eat all oh, day. Your father's too tired, if I might. Just... Hadn't we better get down to the car? Very well, let's go then. Oh. Bye. Bye. You surprised to see me this evening. I was. Did Why? I? I told you, I thought you'd left the country. You were more than surprised. You could hardly believe it. Oh, come on, out with it, Drake. What are you getting at? Well, I didn't like to mention it in front of Joanna, but I had rather a rough passage this afternoon. What do you mean? Well, this fellow waved me down at the bridge. I thought he wanted to lift. I stopped, and three of them set on me. Three what? I thought that you might know about it, Colonel. From what I hear, you keep a close watch on your daughter. It's convenient to have an unpaid housekeeper and secretary, but uh, this is carrying it a bit far, isn't it? My dear fellow, I've never had anything so preposterous in all my life.
Sit down, please, Mr. Drake. Thank you. Take this to the car. I should be down in a moment. Yes, sir. And now, Mr. Drake, I'm expected in the house. I must ask you to be brief. Mr. Minister, I would not like you to think that I was interfering in India's affairs. Come to the point, please, Mr. Drake. There is a defector in your ministry. He is leaking classified information. You have proof of this? Yes, sir. How did you come to be involved in this, Mr. Drake? I was working with Major Khan. Khan? Who was found dead last night. What do you know about this matter? They tried to kill me, too. I'll take you down myself. I'm taking you to see Mr. Chopra. He is my administrative chief. Good. Oh, no, please. Good morning, Mr. Minister. We were not expecting you, sir. Good morning. Tell yes. Mr. Chopra I would like to see him right away if it is convenient. But of course, sir. Please go in, Mr. Minister. Good morning, Chopra. Good morning, sir. I would have come to you. I am pressed for time. This gentleman has some very disturbing information. Uh, this is uh, Mr. Drake. Oh, it is a pleasure, Mr. Drake. How do you do, sir? Well, sir, what is it then? You heard about Khan? Oh, yes, indeed. How tragic. You know, I was talking with him only yesterday. And there have been two attempts on my life. Oh. Well, this is terrible. You've been to the police, of course. Oh, yes, I went to see Khan. And uh, you saw what happened. And you're suggesting there is a connection between the attempt on your life and the murder of Khan? Y yes, I am. What is it, then? He is. Do you know who this is? Yes, I know him. Yes. He used to work here. Used to? Till when? Mr. Drake, this is a matter for us. I can assure you that everything is being taken care of. And in the meantime, someone succeeds in killing me. Well, then, I can only assume that possibly, quite by accident, of course, you have become involved in something that is none of your business. But Mr. Drake tells me that this has to do with British military secrets. Indian military secrets, Mr. Minister. What happened to him? He is gone. Yes. When? Well, um, when Major Khan reported the affair to me, I told him to arrest the man. So you have him? No. He must have been warned. He has disappeared. Why was I not told about this? I have not had the opportunity, sir. I was waiting until I could speak to you alone. I'm sure Mr. Drake can safely leave the matter in our hands. But Mr. Drake is deeply involved. May I suggest, sir, that you allow Mr. Chopra to deal with this in the way that he thinks best? But this involves British weapons. I would not like your government to feel that... Oh, very well. I must go now. I shall expect a full report from you when the house rises. Certainly, sir. But don't worry, Mr. Drake. You can rely upon us. Thank you. Perhaps you will explain to me, Mr. Drake, why did you stop me pursuing this matter? The man in the photograph, sir. Well, what about him? Chopra said he'd bolted. So? Didn't you see him in the outer office? He walked right in. You must be mistaken. No, sir. I'm the one who photographed him. Under arrest, Patel. Come on. All right.
right, all right, all right. So you don't know the Colonel, you don't know that he's the next link in your chain, you don't know he's the man that picked up the stuff you left in the tree. No, no, no. I have never known. All right, let's start from the beginning again. Where were you going to with that bag? I told you I was going to Calcutta. And what about Chopra? Did he know? Yes, I told him. Were you going to contact him? No. Well, you're going to contact him now. And no tricks. Say this. Say you've got to see him. It's vital. Say that he must come to your flat before you catch the 8 o'clock train this evening. And make it convincing. He'd better turn up. Petal. Petal. Just dropping in. Or were you invited? Mr. Drake. You're looking for Petal? You said it disappeared. Mr. Drake, you don't know what you're getting involved in. This is the business of the Indian government. And the Chinese. We know exactly what we are doing. And Petal, this morning you assured me that he was on the run and now you come here to meet him. Petal is part of our plan. But it is none of your business. What plan? Well, we, we are passing on false information. It is meant to deceive the enemies of India. That sounds very convincing. I am not concerned with what you think. You realize you committed an offense under our official secrets act by interfering in this. I'm sorry. Perhaps I have made a mistake. Do you have? The most serious one. Naturally, I shall have to explain my error to, to, to my people. Yes. Before you go, yes. I should also be able to explain to my government that your minister is fully aware of what has been going on. Well, you have my word. Good. I hope your minister will endorse it. Mr. Minister. Oh. Mr. Minister. You must allow me to explain. There will be time for that, Chopra. Take him away. No, no, please, you must let me speak. You're making a terrible mistake. Joanna, I want you to go into town to post this. At this time of night? You must go now. It's for Hong Kong. But I'm going in first thing in the morning. It'll miss the mail. I'll do it myself. All right. I'll go. Excuse me, may I have the parcel, please? Will you come this way, please, Miss Blakely? Please! I'm just going to lock the car. all this about? You've no right. I've every right, Miss Blakely. There you are. I told you. Not like that. They're very valuable. Oh, Joanna. John, thank goodness. How did you know I was here? I'm sorry, but it had to be done. Not you as well. Why did you have to lie to us? Why couldn't you tell us you were police or Customs or something. That's my job to do. Answer me. Surely I have a right to know. Sorry, Joanna. Anything? No, sir. We seem to have drawn a blank, Mr. Drake. No, there'll be something here. Got a piece of white paper. What is all this? Patience, Miss Blakely. Patience. 
Answer me! It won't be long now. Would you like to sit down? Is your father at home now, Miss Blakely? He was there when I left, but he was going out. Where to? We'll go and find out for ourselves, shall we, Sam? Come along, Joanna. in the house, sir. His car is here? I've sent someone to look in the garage. Come on now. Where is he? I've no idea. Or you don't want to tell us? Do you know anything about it, Joanna? No. No, I don't. Better alone, sir. His car is still in the garage, sir. He won't get far out there. Cover all the paths out of here. Yes, sir. Leave her with me. You'll need all your men. Right, Joanna. Where is he? Get out. I'm only trying to help. Help? Is this what you call help? It would be better if we get to him first. He's not done anything. Joanna, your father has been sending official secrets out of this country. I don't believe it. To the people of this country, he is a traitor. Never. Now, if they get to him first, he's not going to be treated very gently, you know. All you'll do is hand him over anyway. I'll have to do that, but at least I can see that he's not roughly handled when he's arrested. Now, where would he be? Oh, there you are, Colonel. Been looking for you everywhere. Don't trust him, he's a policeman. Uh -huh. Don't move. Stop. Stop. Don't, Joanna! Stop! I wondered whether you would. I was surprised to find that in your handbag, but fortunately, I took the precaution. You lied to me. You cheated. You've done a fair amount of that yourself, but I suppose you thought it was in a good cause. Shall we get back? Mm. 